If you're a small business owner and you're drowning in email and you need some help with email management, maybe you wanna learn how to apply Inbox Zero, then keep watching this video. Because in this video, we're gonna to talk to you about Inbox Zero, what it is and how to do it. We're gonna share tips and techniques you can use every single day to make your email management simpler. Plus, we're gonna go through my inbox and show you how to actually apply these techniques. So grab yourself a coffee, grab a snack, and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Mike, and welcome to our channel where we share tips and best practices that will help you level up your small business. So if you wanna take your small business to the next level, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a future video. I'm Christy, and today we're gonna to help you by sharing tips to help you regain control of your inbox. Now, if you're like me, I used to sit down first thing in the morning, open up my inbox, and feel immediate panic about how many emails were in there. And as I'd be going through my inbox, I'd be stressing about all this work that I had to get to, but I couldn't get to this work because I was stuck in my inbox and I just had so many things to do and it just felt so stressful. And I'd say, Christy, today's the day you're only gonna spend a little bit of time in your inbox and then you're gonna get to all this work that you gotta do, but then it would be noon and I'd be like, oh my God, I just wasted half my day in my inbox. It was stressful to say the least. But don't worry, because I've now learned techniques that we're gonna share with you in this video to help me process my inbox so I don't feel this email anxiety anymore. Even though I get even more emails a day than I used to, I don't feel stressed about it because I now have a system that makes me feel confident that I can process my emails, get to the work that I really need to that's more impactful. So keep watching this video if you wanna feel less stressed about managing email and relieve your email anxiety. Yeah, that sounds horrible and way too familiar. But guys, Christy and I are very curious, how many emails do you end up getting in a single day? Is it 50, 100, 200 more? Let us know in the comments down below. So why do we all fall into this trap and get sucked into our inbox and spend entire days just responding to email? I think it's because a lot of us end up using our inbox as a to-do list. I don't know about you, but I can't remember the last time I got an email that wasn't demanding something from me. There's so many demands in the inbox. There's just so many demands. Or it's because we prioritize our inboxes. Many of us will start our days responding to email. And as you guys know, it just keeps coming in all day long. So we can never get ahead of it and get out of our inbox. Email just never stops. You're right, Mike, email never stops, and we can't make it go away. This video isn't gonna make your email magically disappear. But by using Inbox Zero and Stephen Covey's time management matrix, we can help you process your email so that it feels more manageable. So with these techniques, you'll be able to regain control of your inbox instead of your inbox controlling you. Christy just mentioned Inbox Zero, so let's dive into that a little bit, just in case we're all not familiar with that term. Inbox Zero is a methodology, and the goal of this methodology is to get your inbox down to having zero emails in it. And you do this by reading through your emails, deciding what to do with them, and then deleting them or archiving them out of your inbox. I think the trick here is that you never wanna revisit an email. You wanna read it once, figure out what to do with it, process it, and then get it out of your inbox. That's the real trick to getting down to inbox zero. I like to think of this as Marie condifying your inbox. Now I have been applying inbox zero for quite a while, but I still sometimes felt stressed and overwhelmed about the amount of emails that I was getting. And one time in particular stands out. I had gone away for vacation for two weeks and came back to literally thousands of emails in my inbox. I was stressed out about having to deal with all these emails, plus all this work that I still had to do for these projects that had to move forward. And I was complaining about it to my mentor and she said, Christy, I have a tool for you. She pulled out a napkin, drew out Stephen Covey's time management matrix and told me to use this tool when processing my inbox. She also told me only spend about an hour, two hours a day going through email because it's more important and more impactful to be pushing these projects forward. She said, after that two hours is done, if I haven't finished processing emails, that's okay. Turn off email and shift my attention to these projects. It helped tremendously. I used this tool daily when processing my inbox, and for that week that I was trying to catch up on email, I did it, and I was still able to move projects forward because I wasn't prioritizing or stressing about my inbox. Another pro tip when going on vacation for managing your email, make sure you're setting an auto response even if you are gonna be checking email, and leave that auto response on for the first couple days you get back to help you catch up on email. That's a really great tip, Christy, and it's gonna need some explanation, so let's get into it now. What is the time management matrix? It's gonna get a little bit difficult just to talk through, so I think we're gonna need some visuals. So 
I'm gonna pop it up on the screen here. Elvina, get ready for this. Elvina's our graphic designer, she's great. Pop it right here. All right, so here is our time management matrix. And it's a four quadrant matrix, it has two axes along the bottom axis we have urgency and along the side axis here we have importance and you use this as a tool to map out where your emails fall so you have a good idea of what to do with them so let's go through all the different quadrants now so at the bottom corner here you have not important and not urgent these could be things like newsletters that come through or spam that gets through your spam filters really things you don't care about at all delete those immediately. You don't need to keep those around in your inbox. Those are the easy wins to get down to inbox zero. We're gonna to go to the next quadrant over, which is urgent, but not important. And these are things that come in that you feel like you should be dealing with because maybe they're time sensitive. Maybe there's some element of time to them and that makes them feel urgent and makes you want to have to deal with them. But if you think about them, they're not really that important. They're not really a great use of your limited time. So these are the things you might wanna delegate off to one of your staff if, if you think you should do something about this or if you don't have staff and you're just a solopreneur working by yourself then you really have to question if it's worth your time and if it is then maybe schedule it out into the future and then you can come and revisit it later or you just have to get it out of your inbox and kind of ignore it which is very difficult to do but remember your time is precious and you have so little of it so you got to be very strict here when you're in this quadrant and if we continue up here to this quadrant here, important but not urgent. These are things you have to do, you should be doing, but you don't need to do them right now. So you wanna make sure you schedule time to come back to them and do them in the future. Uh, you can use time boxing on your calendar. We did a, a video on time boxing. It's a really great technique to help you plan out time. We'll link that video up here. You can go check that out. But these are things that maybe came in from your client. Maybe you're working on a project with them and they're sending you in details for work you have to do. You can schedule that out into the future and get to it later. And then the last quadrant uh, right up here on the very top is urgent and important. This is a really critical quadrant. These are things you should be doing immediately. Uh, so you want to attack them and get them out of your inbox. These might be things like leads coming in through your email. You wanna get back to them immediately while they're hot. They could be client emergencies. Maybe you do web work and one of your client's websites has gone down. So you need to go in there and get that back up as fast as possible. These are things that you can read, process, by doing right now and then getting them out of your inbox. So you can see the trick here is that with each of these quadrants, it's helping you decide how to deal with the email you're looking at, and then you can deal with it and get it out of your inbox. So now that we all understand the time management matrix a little bit better, let's go through some actual examples with Christy. All right, so now I'm gonna walk you through my inbox and show you how to use the time management matrix to process your email. Now I'm gonna be doing this in Apple Mail. You can use whatever email client you normally use this technique works for any email client, doesn't matter. I'm also going to be doing this with Daylight because that's the CRM that we use to integrate with email. You can use any CRM that you use as long as it integrates with email. And if you don't have a CRM, don't worry because I'll share with you tips how to do it without a CRM. Now, because I only want to be spending about an hour a day in my inbox, what I'm going to do first is skim through my inbox and look for anything that's urgent, maybe something from a client or something from my boss. Most days that's not the case. There's nothing in there that's really urgent, but if there is, I'll deal with that first. And then I'll just start from the top of my inbox and work my way down. Now keep watching because after I go through my inbox, Mike's gonna share another tip with us. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. All right, so this first email is just a newsletter. I've skimmed it and there's nothing really interesting in here. This one isn't urgent, it's not important. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete or archive this one. Same thing with this next email, just delete or archive it. Now this next email doesn't require any action, but I wanna keep a history of this one. So I'm gonna link it in daylight, which is the CRM we use. So that way I have a history of it tied to the contact. Now, if you're not using a CRM, you could create an email folder either for clients um, or for the name of the client, depending on how you organize your emails. And then you're gonna to wanna to archive it so it's not in your inbox. Now this next email is about some work that I need to do for a marketing campaign, but it doesn't need to be done right away. So it's important, but not urgent. So I'm gonna schedule some time on my calendar tomorrow to work on this. And I'm gonna do this in daylight, so that way the email's linked. Again, if you're not using um, daylight or a tool that integrates your email and calendar, what you could do is just create an appointment, kind of block it out on your calendar, and then copy and paste the email details into that appointment so you still have it. And then you can either save the email 
email to a folder if you need to reference it or just archive it. This next email, um, they're just looking for a response. So I'm just going to quickly reply to the email and then archive it after linking it in daylight. Again, if you're not using a CRM, you could just save it to a folder for that client. So this next email is about some work that I have to do and it's pretty urgent. What I would do is kind of pause checking email, go run this report, um, and then come back to this email and archive it or put it in an email folder. So this one is urgent and important, so I would do it right away. This next email, um, this is again related to some marketing work that needs to be done. Um, I would put this in urgent but not important. Normally I would do this myself because it involves writing a blog post, but because my week is kind of already scheduled um, and this one isn't as important as the other work I already have scheduled, what I'm going to do is kind of just delegate this to somebody else. So I can do this in daylight but just by just creating a task and link the email to it. If you're not using a CRM or your CRM doesn't have task delegation in it, what I could do is just kind of forward the email to the person, ask them to do this task and include when I need it done by, or I could just hit somebody up on Slack and say, hey, I just sent you an email, I need you to get this work done, um, and then set yourself some sort of reminder to follow up on it. Um, but since I'm doing this through daylight, when I delegate that task, I'm just gonna check off to get a reminder or notification once it's done. And that's it. That's how I process my inbox, one email at a time. So guys, this was a lot of great information and I hope you're really excited to go and tackle your inbox now with this concept of inbox zero. But I just wanna give you a few more words of wisdom before you do that. Keep in mind that you don't need to stress out if you don't get to zero emails every single day. For me personally, I don't get there and I don't stress out about it at all. To me, inbox zero is less about getting down to absolutely zero emails in my inbox and more about being deliberate and productive with my email and not letting it control my entire day. Having these tools help me keep it at bay and make room for me to work on more impactful projects, which I have a ton of to work on. I can't be sitting in my inbox all day long. And just between me and you, I suffer from FOMO. So I had a really hard time getting good at doing this. It took a lot of practice to be okay with leaving emails there unanswered um, and just sitting in my inbox and waiting till tomorrow or the next day. But, but it was well worth it because now I can spend a bit of time there dealing with the urgent and important quadrant and maybe some of the others if I have time, but then I can just shut it down and go work on the big projects that I know are gonna have a lot of impact in the business. So don't get stressed out about getting down to zero but be more productive with your email. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. Christy and I really hope that this helped you get better at managing your emails so you have less stress in your day and you have more time to work on those impactful projects that are really gonna add value to your company. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you want more content like this that's gonna help you level up your small business, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a future video. And remember, guys, we really wanna hear from you leave us a comment down below. How many emails do you typically get in a single day? If you want to give Daylight a try for managing your email, check out the description. We'll include a link below where you can start your own free trial. If you're interested in learning more about timeboxing that Mike mentioned, make sure you check out our other video about how to make timeboxing work for you. And we'd love to connect with you on Instagram and Facebook. So hit us up, ask us any questions you have.